Right, welcome back again. Let's see, I'm wearing the same things because I just went and ate dinner and decided to record video too because I don't feel like doing any more painting right now. Um, I feel like I'm about 95, 98% of the way there to what I need to be by Wednesday um, for the tournament. Um, so I'm feeling pretty good. I've just been doing stuff like painting the little stitches on all my guys' robes and um, I have like one or two more layers of resin to put on a couple bases for the water effects um, and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm feeling all right. Um, so instead of painting, I'm going to record part two of this WCW preview video. Um, as I promised in the last one, uh, I was going to go through the rest of the lists in my group, um, the United States lists, um, which I did not go over in the first video. Um, as I said in that video, which probably just listen to if you're listening to this one. Um, the format is we play basically a five game GT with um, just the people in our group, in our pool, which is 21 in this case. So we have a filler um, player, a ringer. Um, and then the top two from each pool will go on to the double elimination bracket. And then the rest of us just play three more games throughout the weekend. Um, I didn't mention the, the reason we play three more games is all of the, so best general is based on who wins the double elimination bracket, but all the rest of the prizes, um, like best in faction, best overall, that sort of stuff is all based on eight games. So all the people who aren't in the bracket play three more to get to eight games. And then I think it's just the first three um, games of the bracket count towards um, those folks, um, those eight people's total scores for like best overall. Um, so best general winning the whole thing, the, like the whole winner's bracket is considered first place, but then the rest of the prizes are based off of the eight games. Um, yeah, right. So some names I recognize on the U.S. side here in my group, um, John Anderson, Aaron Newbaum, infamously um, Twitter well-known in AOS, I guess, um, amongst my group for his great outfits and Etc. Um, I was a little, well, I was both happy and sad. I know he also has played Cool Boys, um, but is bringing I to death um, for this. So I got, you know, I clinched the best in faction for Cool Boys because I'm the only one. Um, Duncan Bills, I know that name from like, I know his name from either Fantasy or Malifaux, but I don't know if I've ever met him. Don't know Raymond Lane. Ted Adams plays at the store I play at all the time. Nicholas True, I don't know. Christopher Goslin apparently also plays at Tables and Towers, but I don't think I've met him or played him. If I have, sorry, uh, <laughs> but I don't remember you. Frederick Schmidt, again, I think I recognize that name, but I don't know where he plays. Again, hopefully I haven't played him and forgot. <laughs> but anyway, um, and then I did mention Scooter, myself. Um, so yeah, four people from the US I've play, um, I've played before. Myself. Whatever, four people from our store that we play at a lot, uh, tables and towers. So, looking at lists, um, we'll start off with Aaron with Deepkin in Dom Hain. I don't actually know what Dom Hain does, but this is not the shark list, hooray. This is a Tidecaster, an allied battle mage for uh, plus two charge, I think is that. An Achillean Thrallmaster, and uh, Aspect of the Storm is the fighty one. Yeah, it's got to be the fighty one because he gave it an arcane tome. A second Thrall Master. And then I think this is 50 Thralls. So lots of lots of bodies and fighty killiness. And a Leviathan to be, I think Leviathan buffs up their saves. Um, things near it. And then two sharks. So not no sharks, but only two sharks. Um, with Acolytes and a Battle Regiment. I don't know enough about Idenath to know if this is good. I know that I had one unit of 10 Thralls my dragons once at ATC in 2022. Um, that's the only game I've ever played against Ideneth, and I didn't know going in that you can only shoot the closest thing. So <laughs> I don't really count that as a, you know, it was a learning game, but you know, it's not the best um, way to judge the army. But anyway, I like that this is not a bajillion sharks. Good for you, Aaron. Thank you. <laughs> I don't want to face 10 sharks. Um, Christopher Gosselin is another Bangs of Sotek player. Um, 
Star Seer, Star Priest, Star Seer, Croak, Star Master, Astrolith Bearer. Wow, I'm getting deja vu. 10 skinks, 5 scores scarred, 10 skinks, still it on. And 5 Hunters of Wanchi. I actually really like the Hunters of Wanchi. Um, I played a practice game with Coalesce where I had a unit of 10, and I actually quite liked it with the Bolas. Um, so props for taking Hunters. I feel like I don't see them. Uh, but otherwise, you're Dirty Filthy Seraphon player. How could you? Uh, Duncan with Lumineth. Again, I still have never played a game against the Lumineth. This is an Ametricalist, so it is not Eclis. So that thing, that seems fun to me. I, I had a I had a minute where I was thinking that I might play Lumineth, and then I painted ten Wardens and was like, this was horrible. <laughs> I hate everything about this, so I didn't paint anymore. Um, but when I was thinking about it, I was thinking about Ametrica. So cool to see this. Um, he's got a Stone Mage, uh, an Enlightener. I know this is the double CP spell, word save, and I don't remember what this is. Look it up. Uh, Avalonor, so the special character, Big Cow. A Lore Seeker, who is good for holding down objectives, if I remember right. And then these two, um, this little character that I don't remember exactly what it does, you know, what they do. Um, obviously, they can cast at least one spell. I think they're just a little like all around character. Whatever. I should probably look this up, but I won't. Not yet. Uh, and then this is, I believe these come in five, so I think this is ten, five, five stone guards. Um, ten tree revenants in allies, five dawn riders. Seems like a cool list. Um, I think I would be okay into this because Emetrica ignores rend, and I just do a lot of mortal wounds. So this is fairly elite low wound count which is ignoring Rend. I think it's a good list, but probably is not amazing into micro voice. So that's good. <laughs> All right. Uh, da, da, da. All right, Duncan, Frederick Schmidt, Sylvana, Harvest Boon. I think this is the pregame move for this, this Spite Rider things. Um, but he's got a branch with two branch witches, uh, tree lord ancient, six revenant seekers. So these are the ones that can heal or resurrect. I think they can resurrect one model in the other two units. Um, I know they have Ren two, which I don't care too much about. Anyway, six of the healy resurrecty ones, two by three of the just fighty ones, five tree revenants. And six Karnoth Hunters with great swords. Again, I think I think seeing a list like so this is just obviously combat focused and it's gonna fly it in in people, I think, I guess. Um, or just you know be fast and play objectives. Regardless, um, it seems like a another lower wound count. I think these are five each. Mm. 90 wounds. I guess it's not that low of a count. Looking at it, it's a low model count. I guess it's not low wound count, but um, seems like a fairly. He has. Oh, I guess everything just has burden blessing by default. Maybe that's um, that's the harvest boon thing or doing playing thing. I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, he doesn't have he doesn't have a thing to give him a second spell, so that must be some faction thing. Um, but anyway, what I was saying was, I think this is okay um, for me to go into. Um, the gut rip is going to do well as screens in being a little more durable in this because it has so much fighty stuff that is not monsters or heroes. So they're all going to be minus one to hit into the gut rippers. And it seems like I can. I should be able to just pop 15 wounds of these guys and not have the healing come in. Although they, the resurrecting, um, I, I guess they can also probably bring back a Karnoth Hunter. These guys are dead. Um, yeah, this will be an interesting one. I've played a little bit of Sylvaneth. 
um, against the Sylvaneth, but not this type of list with the, all the fast flying guys, uh, and not with Crow Boys. So, see how that goes if it comes to it. Uh, John Anderson. John, who did my boy dirty at Nova. Uh, with Ida Neff. Again, dirty once again with a bunch of Alapexes. So, this is two. Two of the three Ideneth in my group are all Alapexes, and, uh, and then Aaron is the cool one. <laughs> uh, this one is a little different than the other. Instead of the king, it's a Tidecaster and Lotan. Um, I know having the having something Ishiran opens up a little bit of stuff with the tides, I believe. Um, I know there's some there's something with the tides that they can like an extra ability or something. Again, I'm not going to read everything to know tonight live what I don't know uh, to learn. Um, I'm just going through these fairly quickly. Um, so this is one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, yeah, so this is again nine sharks and a Leviathan. So identical to the other list, just swapping out Lotan and a Tidecaster for the king. Um, and it's a two drop. Yeah, because he can have two battle edges because he has the um, two characters instead of one. Um, so I wonder, I would imagine that gives this list the edge in the mirror matchup against the other shark list, but I don't know. Um, one other thing I was speculating about um, looking at the shark lists and the um, other lists in the group, I was just thinking about that KO list. I just think that K list is going to have a real bad time. Because um, there's three IDK lists, and that feels like it really, especially the shark lists, just feel like they just hard counter KO. Because those two units of 15 Thunders are each only going to target one thing per turn. You're going to get to shoot one shark with those 15 Thunders. Cool. Yeah, one shark with 15 Thunders. You kill that one, I guess you can shoot another shark. And then you have seven more sharks. And a turtle coming at you, and it's like they're just going to be on your thunders next turn, and you're going to be dead. So, uh, rip to the KO, I guess. Uh, that was John Nicholas True with OBR. Uh, this one is Null Myriad, um, with Archon, an Os Vector, and Alish Kavalos. Two by four Morgast Archai. Five Death Riders, three more discard. So this is basically, I will call this the Tom Guan list, because um, I, I think Tom popularized this. Um, but this is super solid. Tom, I think Tom went five and zero at it somewhere, maybe multiple places already. And I think it's basically what he's bringing to um, to this. Um, I don't I don't know Tom's particular um, command trait setup and stuff like that, but um, did I say this was Nicholas? Yes, Nicholas. Um, he chose to take the aura of sterility, so this is minus one to hit and wound in an aura of 12 inches around the os effector. Reinforced constructs is, I believe, the four up ward versus mortals. I think that's a weird choice. I feel like you. Obviously, the Archon knows the whole lore, so like you're going to get to cast whatever you want with Archon, but I personally, I think a better choice with your other caster would be Empowered at right Weapons or Drain Vitality. Just because I think, I'm gonna look this up actually, I think Reinforced Constructs has a shorter range. Empowered at right Weapons has like a 24 inch range, which is nice because if you're I, mean, I guess the, he's trying to keep the Os Vector, uh, try to have him keep up with the rest of the army for the Aura, the Cartouche for the plus one wound. Um, but I just feel like, no, I guess Reinforced Constructs is 18 inch range. Anyway, all right, so I was right, that is the four board versus mortals. I don't, I just, I prefer the Empower and Adorate Weapons or Drain Vitality on him. Um, but personal preference. Um, so, yeah. Got a couple buff spells with Archon and him. Gonna be giving plus one wound, or sorry, plus one attack out to one of the Morgast Archives to make him hit even harder. And these things are just, you know, they're gonna move 13 inches, they're gonna charge in. You're not gonna get Unleash Hells 
they're not going to get a lot of defense. They're going to chop things up. It's scary. Uh, the Death Riders and the Immortus Guard open up two book tactics. It's a very good list. Love Archon. Love Archon. I, I like never have more fun than when I'm playing with Archon. Which, you know, you might say, then why didn't you bring OVR to this? And I'm like, well, I'm a hipster. So I, I wanted to be the one person with crew boys, not one of eight with OVR. Um, Scooter, I feel like I've even talked about Scooter's list on this channel before. So War Chanter, Shaman, Maul Crusher, uh, War Chanter, Scragrot, 2 by 6 Scorgrunches, 10 Brutes. This is, one I, this is what I was talking about in the last video when I said I'm more used to seeing 2 by 6 Gruntas and 10 Brutes. Um, all in a Windrop, 1970 points, so good chance of getting the Triumph. Um, it's good. The only army Scooter plays, and he kicks ass with it. He knows it in and out. Um, I'm sure he's going to do great. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets out of the group. Um, I don't, you know, I don't know all the matchups between everyone else, but maybe something or counters that. I'm not sure. Uh, the only Nurgle in our group, Raymond Lane. I apparently Nurgle's good again, and everybody's taking the Glotkin. Um, Nick, Nick G, my friend, you you missed. Uh, this is your time. You were ahead of the game. You were early. Um, he took he took Glotkin to ATC last year in 2022, uh, and it didn't work out super well. But now everyone's taking the Glotkin and like winning stuff. So this is the Glotkin um, with his like counter charge ability. Um, Blowout Broadspond is a nice big monster dude. Morbid X Twice Born, I think, is one of the other big monster dudes. Harbinger of Decay is a Priest, I believe. It's the Dawnbringers um, guy. And it's 2 by 10 Plague Bearers and 20 Rottmeyer Creed. Um, I don't know what Blessed Sons does. I'm putting the lie to myself. I am going to look up a couple things while, while we're live here, just because I am curious. Subfaction, Blessed Sons, Nurgle's Embrace, if a what? A friendly Blessed Sun's mortal model is slain within an inch of an enemy unit. Before removing that model from play, pick one enemy unit within one inch of that model and roll a number of dice equal to Lewin's characteristic of the model. Reach six, give that enemy one disease point. Not, not many things that are mortals in this list. I don't understand. All right, well, uh, maybe I'm missing something. I don't, I don't see how that synergizes with the rest of the list. Glotkin's a demon. Plague bearers are demons. I guess these guys are maybe mortals, and the Rotmire Creed are mortals. So you're just like, I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe it's just nothing else synergized with this list anymore, and he's just like, cool. Maybe I'll get one or two disease points through the game, um, just as a freebie thing. Um. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, Glockin is, and this isn't a, it doesn't seem like it's a super, it's not like the summoning list with like the wither stave on an unclean one and stuff. So I don't know exactly what this list does. Um, I've probably sounded a little dismissive of a lot of these lists, <laughs> more more so than I mean to. And that I, I, I don't want to be saying, like, obviously this is the World Championships, all these people had to win a tournament to get here. Maybe they didn't do it with these lists in particular. Um, but I, I don't want to sound dismissive, because these are all very good people, obviously. Um, if I sound dismissive, it's more because I'm like, this list probably does something, and I don't understand what it does. <laughs> so this is more like my... I, I'm probably coming more from a place of ignorance and expertise here, so I'm not like, oh, this list is bad. I'm like, I don't see how this list is good, but there's probably a way. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. Because, um, like, I don't know, when I, I feel like when I see Glockin, it's with, like, you, know, you have the Glockin, and you have the Sloppity, and you have, like, six Beasts of Nurgle, and you're going to be summoning things, and, like, you're pinning things with the Beast of Nurgle, and then people can't pile in, and, like, you're countercharging, and... This I'm like I guess you kind of charge with like bears when somebody moves and you just hope they don't know about I don't know I don't know I'll be curious 
very curious to see how this does. Um, me, we talked about me and Ted, last but not least, Ted. Um, Ted's taking OBR, uh, Null Myriad. I feel like this is, again, I feel like this is a little bit of an older style OBR list um, from like before the nerfs, but I still fit it in exactly 2000 points. So that's good. Um, but it's Catacross, a Bone Shaper with Artisan's Key for the double heal, and he has Empowered Nadaric Weapons. Then I do, I do freaking love the Soul Mason with Blizzard and Dark Acolyte, because he's a two caster and maybe he can, he's usually a three cast because he can cast his um, War Scroll spell um, at the end of the phase. Um, so he's going to be getting an unbindable spell from the lore. And then he can try Blizzard if he's in range. If he's not in range, he can try another spell from the lore and his War Scroll spell. Uh, which buffs either the Death Riders or 10 more tech guard. Um, love the Soul Mason. Um, the only downside of the Soul Mason is he is mounted, so he can't be in the Acolyte Battalion. And also he gets the worst lookout, sir. Um, but anyway, the thing the thing that I think of as like the older version of OBR is he has 2 by 6 and Mortis Guard. And they're pricier now, and they're not as amazing as they used to be because resing them back is not as good as it used to be. Um, so you you know it used to be you roll a three up and you just bring back a full health and mortis guard, which is obviously incredible and was overpowered. Um, and now the rule is if there are no more wounds to heal, uh, when you heal them, you roll a three up. And if you get three up, you bring back an immortis guard, but an immortis guard that only has one wound left. So it has four wounds allocated to it already. So you would need, yeah. So the most you're doing is potentially three three wound heals. So if there's even one wound on a surviving mortis guard, you need one heal to heal that wound. You need another heal to bring back a mortis guard with one wound, and then another heal to heal three wounds on that. So the most you're doing with your three heals is bringing back one mortis guard. And even if they were exactly dead, you could three up, bring one back with one wound, then heal it to four wounds, and then heal it to full. So the most you can possibly bring back with Catacross's three wound heal, and then if you get both with the Bone Shaper, is one Immortus Guard. So this is just gonna this is just gonna die faster than it used to um, with the old version of the rules before the the errata, I think, you know, whatever the update. Um, so I'll be very curious to see how Ted does. It does, you know, you do have the two, like I've been saying, you have the two book battle tactics with the Death Riders and the Immortus Guard. And the Immortus Guard, Mortison one. Um, as long as there's objectives wholly outside your territory to get, which is not always true, um, you're probably definitely going to get that with 12 Mortis Guard and two Mortisons. Um, and it is Null Myriad. Um, so, like, I probably, I want to face this less than the Crematorians list for sure, because I can't debuff this. Um, I would still probably try and cast, like, Choking Mist, because minus one attack on a Mortis Guard is real hit to their, um, real hit to their damage. I mean, I'm just imagining, yeah, I might as well make them roll the two ups. <laughs> and if they roll a one, I'll be stoked. Um, or if somehow I can... I mean, you're not going to get Mortis on as long as they're standing next to the Mortis Guard. But that is an easier way to kill a Mortis Guard is to damage Mortisons and make them bodyguard wounds over onto the Mortis Guard. So I'll definitely be looking for opportunities if I play list this or a list like this um, to you know maybe do fast and with the Nash tube and get around and hit the hit one of the bone bone shapers, the Mortisons, the bone shaper, the soul mason. Um, Obviously can't shoot them when they're next to them because of lookout, sir, but probably want to focus on the Death Riders first anyway with shooting. And then um, probably Catacross as well. So nothing wrong with just shooting Catacross and putting some wounds into him that he has to bodyguard onto the Immortus Guard um, and maybe doing some to Catacross. Although 
against OBR, it's definitely better to focus your damage just so Catacross can't spread out his heal on multiple units. So that that kind of speaks towards maybe just shooting the Mortis Guard and doing a bunch of mortal wounds <laughs> to them. Um, this is this this army. If he, um, yeah, that's one of the other thing. I don't know the two by six and Mortis Guard. Like he can Soul Mason can put the four board versus mortals onto one of these units. And then I think whichever one he does it to, I just shoot the other one, um, or shoot. You know, I shoot whatever is that's not on, and focus on everything else because one Mortis Guard unit won't can't be everywhere at once. Can't kill everything. Um, I think I, I think it's. It's a good list, um, and it's it would be a hard matchup for me. Null Myriad is rough. Um, it's so much of um, you know, the good the good cool boy spells are debuffs. You're you're choking mist. You're summoning boggy mist. Um, the, the nasty hex to turn off the words. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I I feel like I would want to play the play against this on like a high objective count list, just to be able to pick off these things and then this is all trying to stay together in a castle whereas i have much more units and ability to spread out over the board so yeah i think i think it would be very dependent on um what the scenario is which again we don't know what the scenarios will be um so yeah that is all of the lists in group four um so as i said Probably the first two rounds, at least, will mostly be playing people, you know, the U.S. people will be playing mostly not from the U.S. Um, but I don't know, then by round three, since everyone in the U.S. is going to be winning all their games, like, we're going to have to be playing each other. So, you know, <laughs> I'm going to hit these at some point, right? Um, yeah, so um, that's group four. It's been 25 minutes. I have a little more time. I may just go... And look at everyone real quick and see if I see anyone that like their name I recognize and see their lists. Um, I know somebody said group two. I've seen people saying like group two is the group of death. I'm curious as to who in, who is in here. I definitely recognize Ben Hosk. Oh, what? What just happened to me? Did I? There we go. I recognize Ben Hosking. I'll look at his list. Gavin. Okay, we obviously we've all heard of Gavin. Largely considered, maybe even just by IT3 rankings, I don't know. Whatever. He's one of the best Warhammer players in the world. Um, so this is Gavin's list. He's taking corn. Yeah, that's good. I want to look at some corn lists, even though they're not in my group. Because <laughs> corn is great. Um, so he's taking the Gore Tide. Um, I don't know what Bring Me a Worthy Skull is, but he has Drom. What? Wounder of Worlds. All right. That's awesome. Blood Secrator. Realm Gore Ritualist, Slaughter Priest, the standard um, Bloodthirster setup, and then the allied Dedra Skull Crier, um, which I think is mostly just for a magic dominance um, tactic. I mean, I'm sure she's useful for, for other things. It's never bad to throw Mystic Shield on something. Um, I do like, since he has Thedra, that he doesn't take the Slaughter of Sorcery. Um, I should look up what that is. But then he has 20 Blood Warriors, 2 by 10 Blood Reavers. I feel like that's pretty standard for the mortal based um, list. Uh, then he has the two guys that go with Drum. Oh, I didn't realize Drum was like a war cry dude. Did not realize that. Um, 10 Wrathmongers, which are giving everything around them, I think, plus one attack. And then the, the dudes that go with Thedra. And then he actually has, oh, he has three of the invocations. I usually see like two. So he has all three. Like Scourge or Skulls to help with magic, the Wrath Axe to do damage, and whatever the Bleeding Icon is. I think the Bleeding Icon hurts um, Battleshock tests, if I remember correctly. Let me uh, pull up my super legitimate source of information in another tab. Do, 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 do. I just want to see. Yes, blades of corn. All right. Slaughterhosts. Gore Tide, right? Yeah, Gore Tide is plus one to wound for attacks made with melee weapons by Gore Tide Bloodbound units. So this is the, the mortal guys. 
uh, that target an enemy unit who is contesting an objective you do not control or an enemy unit wholly within enemy territory. Got it. All right. So better fighting us on objectives or in enemy territory. The grand strat is the other thing I wanted to know. Bring me a worthy skull is... Ah, okay. At the start of the first battle round, ask your opponent to pick a hero from their army to be the worthy foe. When the battle ends, you complete this grand strat. If that hero has been slain, the model picked to be your general has not been slain. That is... That is super interesting. That seems very hard. Um, because your opponent can, since your opponent gets to pick the model, they can just pick something that they don't want to get close to you anyway. Just run around and hide it. Or just kill your general, who's the bloodthirster. So, like, yeah, like, you're going to want your bloodthirster in combat. You're not going to hide your bloodthirster. So, um, that's interesting. I feel like that's, that's tough. But maybe is better than Slaughter of Sorcery, so you don't have to sacrifice Thedra just to get your Grand Strat. Um, yeah, intriguing. Um, there were how many slaves to darkness were there? Oh, I, already, I, I closed that tab. Whatever. There's a few slaves to darkness. I thought about bringing my slaves and playing like a host of the ever chosen list. So I am curious what other slaves are doing. This one is Ra. Oh, all right. This is Ravager. So this is. 60 Splintered Fang, 9 Untamed Beast, the Nurgle Knights, uh, and it's the Warcry Dude, the Karkadrak, two Sorcerer Lords. Um, cool. I don't know. I dig it. It's cool. Um, I don't know how. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it is Warlord Battalion. Oh, and it's a tender drops. So the warlord must have been for an extra um, spell because this guy's got Horfrost Conduit. This guy's got Blizzard and Speed, and uh, the Karkadrak is a ah, it's a Nurgle Idolater Lord. So all of the cultists are minus one to wounding combat. That's fun. I feel like I people. I don't know. I feel like I see people take corn, but maybe you actually already have the damage, and it's just nice to be a little more tanky with your little cultists. Right, so that's fun. Um, Noah's taking another corn list. Caleb is taking um, his Zinch list, and I think I saw it's the version with, um, yeah, so it's the version with the Kron's Uh And it sounded like he just couldn't get the Varengard painted in time to take that version um, that he brought to the GT the other last month. Um, so yeah, this is his, I think it's his standard cross button list with two acolytes, Zangor's Marauders, Lord of Change, Magister, Magister, Thaumaturge, and one of the Magisters, you can use Fate Dice to, to kill itself, uh, doing the double cast to set the Incarnate Wild. And it's Guild Summoner, so he's going to get another Lord of Change or two. Um, Noah's Blades, this, he does have the Slaughter of Sorcery, Bloodthirster, Scarbrand, pretty classic combo. Ritualist, Slaughter Priest, Slaughter Priest, Bloods Crater, kind of everything you expect, or at least I expect. Uh, 20 Blood Warriors, 2x10 Blood Reavers, again, pretty standard. He's got 8 Claws of Karanak, 6 Furies, which is cute, and only 2 of the Invocations. I feel like this is a more standard corn list than Gavin's. Uh, cool. Look at a Git, sorry. Let's see. Who, who on this page looks cool? Definitely recognize Josh Bennett's list. I assume Daughters of Cain is just Marathi and Bow Snakes. Oh, maybe not. I see a High Glider Atrix. Oh, it's not Marathi and the Bow Snakes. 30 Witch Elves. 2 by 5 Heart Renders and Gotrek. It does have Marathi, but not all the Bow Snakes. That's interesting. I hope that does well. Uh, I said we were going to look at Gits. Matthew Davies from Wales. Let's see. So Gits lists. It's King's Gits. They're chasing the moon. A Skagrot, a Squig Boss, a Web Spinner Shaman, who is the general, with Hoarfrost. Uh, 2x15 Bounders, 2x20 Stabas, Gabapalooza, and 2x5 Smash Up Fanatics. I like that. I like that. It's cute. I like the 2x20 Stabas with the nets. A minus one to hit is annoying. 
and the fanatics can do some damage. You got the two by 15 banners to run around being fast and just slaughter things. Um, I believe the clammy hand is the bring, you know, roll twice, whatever, use the faction train twice to bring things back. So you don't mind too much if the 15 bounders dies early and then you just bring it back out of the, the blue train. It's cute. I like it. Um, curious what soul blight people are bringing these days. Michael from France, what are you running? Virkos, Empire of Corpses, Gorslav, Necro, Belladama. Ah, and 160 zombies. Cool. <laughs> 20 dire wolves. All right. Well, that's not that interesting. 221 wounds, and they're all going to come back. Great. Let's see. Uh, group 2, Ibneth. This is more sharks. This is exactly the same list as one of the shark ones in my group. Uh, Iron Jaws. What does Australia do for Iron Jaws? They do all piggies and some brute creatures. Cool. A mega boss, a mock Russia. Standard. What's their LRR looking like in group two from France? We've got Calgrave, Cathaler, Teclis, Eltharion, Ten Wardens, Five Blade Lords, Five Dawn Riders. Ooh, and two by five more Dawn Riders. So no archers in this. That's interesting. Yeah. Hmm. I hope it works. I love not seeing a bunch of archers. Dawn Riders are cool. Uh, let's see. We've also got more Skaven, Big Wog, Daughter of Storm. Oh, I want to see what the Stormcast is doing. <laughs> okay, the Mortal Wound Bomb. So one, two, three, four, five Vexilors with Meteoric Standard. So those are picking a point once per game within 24 inches of them in the hero phase and everything within six inches takes d3 mortal wounds they're just like hey <laughs> i'm just gonna kill you uh, with mortal wounds and of course all the annihilators when they drop everything within 10 inches of where they land on a three up takes d3 mortal wounds the impaired can bring one per turn down with um within seven i assume the arcane tome ah so the arcane tome is to open up fell casting spot and probably magic dominance. So this guy probably just stands in a corner, like as far away as he can get from anything, and gets magic dominance one turn, and then just doesn't die because he doesn't need any sort of range for his seven inch drop down. Um, so six heroes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Got it. All right, so the six heroes and one unit of Vanguard Hunters must start deployed, and then all seven of these go up in the sky. You don't want them starting on the ground, they move forward. Which is very slow. Um, yeah, God, the the shield annihilator is being one fifty now. It's just so absurdly cheap. Nine wounds with a two up save, and they hit okay in combat. And they do mortal wounds, like I said, when they land. And then if they charge, they do charge mortals. I I think annihilators are a freaking steal for one fifty. Um, and the grand hammers at two hundred are also pretty good. So. I don't know. It feels like it feels like a gimmick. It's a little bit of a gimmicky list, but it'll be cool to see it do well. Um, KO in group two. I feel like I recognize Zachary Shin that name as well. Chemist, chemist, admiral. This, yeah, okay. So this is the new expeditionary force. So even though it got nerfed, where you can't pick up reinforced units, he's still doing it. So he's got one, two, three, four, five. Units of five thunders and five gun haulers. <laughs> oh my! All right, so so he's just picking up a unit of thunders with each unit of gun haulers and dropping them and trying to roll four ups to double shoot. Um, hope he gets crushed. <laughs> Punish all KO players. Um, oh, I said I wanted to look at the Skaven. So that is Richie from England. Let's look at Brian Rutherford with Big Walk too. So the Skaven list. All right, so this is another three Skaven Bell Plague Furnace. This is almost exactly the same. This, this is exactly the same list. All right, cool, so there's multiple of these lists. Maybe this is Iron Gutsman's exact list, I don't know. Um, 
nasty. Big Wog, obviously has Gobsprack, because um, you can get the Cowboy's Tactic with just Gobsprack and get a nice dispelling. And of course, it's mostly Iron Jaws shit. So Weird Knob, Work Out Profit, that's the non Iron Jaws thing you bring to do those zappies. Two War Chanters, 6 3 3 Girl Gruntos, and 5 10 5 Brutes. Cool. Um, Big Wog's real good right now. They do tactics real well. Um, I skip. I didn't look at Sylvaneth here. Oh, it's another Larial list with great bows. See, I feel like, where is this from? It's the Scottish list, Reese. I feel like I don't see things like this. I'll have to look at what my group, where they were from. I feel like I don't see lists like this, Sylvaneth lists like this in the US. At least in my experience, I've never played against a Lariel. I think I've seen somebody bring a Lariel. But the whole, the whole nine great bows, a Lariel thing, I feel like I don't see over here. Now I'm curious. Where was, it? Where was our Sylvaneth player in group four? Is that, that Frederick Schmidt? Nope. See, that's not Hilariel. England. Yeah, Arch Revenant, Hilariel. Nine great bows. This must just this must just be a UK, like this must be UK meta Sylvaneth list. This is this is, all right. There we go. This is what I'm excited about for WCW. Is I feel like this is a great example of different regions of the world having different metas and different things that they think are the good list in their faction because if I had to guess like what people like I didn't see any lists and I was like all right what are the Sylvaneth people going to bring to this this would not be what my guess was um I don't know I don't think Belthanos is legal for this tournament I was going to say, I, maybe maybe this was just, I was thinking maybe this was just because technically right now, I think Ilariel can summon both Thanos. He's real good. Um, but I don't think, I don't think both Thanos was released in time. Um, I don't even think it's out yet. So it, it must not be that. So this, this must just be like the, the meta in the UK is a little different. And their thoughts on what a good Sylvaneth list is different than ours. Uh, which is super interesting. Um, I also kind of feel like that is where all these Skaven came from too, because like I think three, yeah, so this Skaven list is from England. I think, yeah, I think there's like three French players playing Skaven. Um, I look at this one. Oh, yeah, this is group four. Of course I looked at it. Um, yeah, so like I think all the I think all the Skaven players pretty much are European as well. Um, so that's just super interesting to me, and I think that's something that is cool about this tournament. Um, yeah, so I went down this I, whatever I did some of the group two folks. Let's look at group one real quick. Um, any names I recognize here? Christopher Schelling sounds super familiar, but he's playing Sun, so I'm not even going to look at his list. <laughs> Got giants in it. Spoiler alert. Um, again, Dean Duncan's brother. Um, name I recognize, but I don't know if I ever met them. Uh, playing Seraphon, and I think yeah, I gotta look at him. He's the cool one playing Battle's Claw instead of Fangs of Sotek. Got a Star Master, a Troglodon, an Astrolith Bear, ten Warriors, five Guard, five Guard, six Lancers, three Lancers, and a Stegadon. Look at this list out of left field. Amazing. Cool. Good luck. The the one he's the one non Starborn um Seraphon, so good for him. Uh tch, 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 tch. Leo. I definitely have seen that name. Bring KO. Twenty Argonaut Company. Interesting. This is a this is a very mixed list. So it's got an ironclad, 15 thunders, 600 riggers, gun hauler, 
This is interesting. This is not a filthy, well, at least it doesn't seem like a filthy list to me. Um, chemist, he does have the navigator, so he does, you know, get zero points, do not pass go. From me, um, yeah, Admiral, Chemist, Navigator, 1 by 15. This seems like a nice balanced little KO list. This is like a list I would not hate to play, which is amazing. <laughs> Good job. Uh, well done, Leo. Um, Michael Roche, I definitely recognize his name with Beasts of Chaos. Uh, only three Bulgars, so not playing like the big Bulgars. Playing Zangor and Lightning on Discs. It's cool with a Bellicor ally. Neat. Um, Bill Marshall, I feel like that's like the kid's name I hear. I don't know, I feel like Phil. I feel like I've heard Phil's name in regards to slaves, but regardless, he's playing King's Gits, Shrine, Scragrot, Madcap. Oh, very light on heroes. It's cool. Uh, 2 by 15 Bounders, 2 by 20 Stabas, Gobblepalooza, Sneaky Snufflers, Mad. Oh, again! Again, what is this? What are these people doing bringing these identical lists? I don't think. He's the one? I don't think he's the one I looked at. No, I was looking at somebody in group two with that list. Or a very, very close list with 2 by 20 Stabas and Fanatics and stuff. Um, so again, the not the list I see in the US. Very cool. Um, and in fact, let's see Ricky Fisher's list. Let's see if I'm lying. Yeah, all right. He's got a Trog boss. Ungoid, Scragrot, Founders, Rock Guts. I don't know if this is... This is probably 9. I'm not sure if this is 9 or 6. I feel like it must be 9. They're probably 170. Yeah, must be 9. Does have 20 Stabas, Gobblepalooza, Snufflers. So yeah, there's a different list out of the US. Um, Rania from Sweden with Soul Blight. Not a thousand zombies. Thank you, Rania. Um, Legion of Night with Manfred, Vamp Lord. I feel like it's the other archetype you kind of see a lot um, if it's not the 150 zombies. Um, ooh, with Elmorn. Cute. And Lagavai. Not on the special characters. Uh, Felbats, Starwolves, Felbats, Spellies, the Graveguard, Sons of Felborn. Cute. I like it. I love I love these like balanced lists that take a bunch of different things instead of just spamming five units of set piece. Um, ch -ch 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 -ch. Whales. I haven't talked about whales at all. This is the One Night Hunt list. The Cruel Gas, Spirit Torment, Wielder of the Blade. I think that's the Warcry Warband, and I don't know what it does. And a Guardian of Souls, no Olinder. Um, got out the cool cast. That's the important thing. Uh, three spirit hosts, heritance, heritance, heritance. This must be Quicksilver. Yep, Quicksilver dead. Um, so 40 heritance, two black coaches. That's awesome. Term Nexus is great, and this is the um, it's the rest of the warband. That's cool. I hope you win some games with this. Um, I haven't talked about anyone from Canada either. Here's some KO. This is this is what I think is better for KO is oh, but it's in an ironclad. Mm. See, I like I like the two by nine ender Riggers in two frigates with a strike first coming out of the frigate. Um, so this isn't that. This is two gun haulers and ironclad. Dude, this is so interesting. This is so, I, this is so fun. Love this. I'm just I'm 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 going in thinking I'm going to know what these lists are, and then I'm like, it's not at all what I expected. Yeah, this one's gonna open my door, so I need the sword of door closing. There we go. Um, I guess I could just pause when I do that, but that's no fun. Um, all right, so this is again not a completely hateful KO list, Ray. I'm glad we've gotten to that place as a as a game. Um, talked about Gits, talked about Seraphon, because everything else is just. Starborn. It's gross. Um, let's see. Yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't see anything I particularly want to look at in here. Let's go to the last group real quick. More soul blight. Oh, this must be where all the OBR are hiding uh, in this group. Alex, I don't know if 
recognize that name, but maybe just from looking at these lists. Like Mortis Praetorians. Also, I'm glad we have we have a Crematorians, we have Mortis Praetorians. It's not all Nolmir yet, which is cool. And he is taking Xantos, which is awesome. Um, so that's the Mortis Praetorian special character, Leash Koalas. Bone Shaper, Catacross. He does have Dark Acolyte for the Magic Dom. And 10 Mortec Guard, 3 by 5 Death Riders, and 6 Mortis Guard. It's a cute list. I like it. Um, lots of counter charging opportunities and doing mortals on the charge. Neat. Um, that Soul Blight list. Ooh, I always love a White King model. Um, yeah, Legion Knight with Manfred, Antlord, Necro. By two Felbats, Death Rattle Skeletons. I think this is 30. Um, so hard to kill them before they all come back on four ups at the end of combat. Uh, Dire Wolves and 20 and 10 Graveguard Geminids. Continue to be surprised we don't see more Geminids, but um, that's good. We can look at a Blades of Corn list. Curious about this Carson uh, Canadian um, Poker Army. All right, so yeah, this is this is what I wanted. This is what I practiced against against Nick. Basically, is the Meat Fist Army. They're doing Charge Mortals um, better than usual. Firebelly, Frost Lord, Slaughter Master, Gluttons, Iron Guts, Iron Guts, Gluttons, Iron Blaster, you know, Denoblars for screening immortals. This is, yeah, this is what I practiced against that Nick Jackson played um, the other day. Super solid. I bet it's going to do really well. I hope so. Cool list. Um, this Blaze of Corn is another Gore Tide. Uh, also with Drum. But Fedra on this one. The Grand Strategy G is Baron Ice Scape, which I haven't seen before. I think that's. I think that's not have any enemies alive near the center of the board. If I remember correctly. And maybe you also have to kill King's Artifacts. But anyway, <laughs> standard. Cool. Got all the invocations. Got the Gore Chosen, 10 Wrath Markers, Got Sworn Hunt. Again, a very similar list to one of the others. Um, is this Brian's list? Yeah, yeah. All right. So that was Brian's list. We saw one very similar to that already. Let's see if Denmark is playing corn differently. They took Overshadow. This three by ten Blood Warriors, and twenty Blood Letters. Interesting. And then the Wrathmongers buff up attacks nearby. That's a bit different. It's cool. Oh, another Slaves player. They're doing a nice the Empty Throne with Bellacor. Aragard, you know. My Six Furies is cool. Miracle Knights. Neat. Uh, Ooh, I'll look at this other Slaves list because I play Slaves and I'm curious. Again, Bellacor. Slightly different. This is nice to the empty throne, but a little different with Unmade and Cypher Lords and a unit of Chosen, Nurgle Chosen instead of Nurgle Knights. It's kind of cool. You don't benefit from being Kotet, but fine. Uh, oh, Jonathan Ward. Yeah. Played Jonathan at ATC this year, and he's awesome. Uh, he's playing Legion of Blood Soul Delight with Neferata, Vamplord and Zombie Dragon, a Vamplord. 30 skeletons, 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 uh, two by 10 direwolves, 20 grave guards. This is very similar to the list he played me against, um, played against me with uh, at ATC. Um, I think I had a vamp lord and some zombies in that one. So this is maybe, he might've swapped out the zombies for direwolves. Um, but he beat my OBR with it. So seems good. Another meat fist list, beasts. Let's see what France and Australia are doing for Maggot Pin. The French list, you recognize this name, is Orgot, Demon Spew, Blockin, Sloppity, Rotbringer, Two Beasts of Nurgle, Two Units of Plague Bearers, 120, 110, Nurglings, and Plague Drums. See, this is, this is a bit more of what I expected from my Blockin list, is a couple beasts, Sloppity Bile Piper, so you don't have to summon him in. Big drones and nerglings, cool. 
yeah, this, I feel like that's I feel like this is a little better than the other one, our Galactin list. And then Australia, Loab, Orgots, Botkin. So both of the big monster guys. Botkin, Sloppity, 3 by 10 Plague Bearers, 20 Creed. Again, I like this. I think I like this a little bit more than that first list we saw. It's good. Tom Guan with OBR doing, yeah, this is what I call the Tom Guan list, and it is indeed what he's taking. I saw this before. Uh, the Sun's list, don't care. Ooh. One more Skaven. This is a US Skaven. See, all right, see, this is different. This is different. US Skaven has a Vermin Lord, two Gray Seers, Lord Screech, two Plague Priests, Clan Rats, two by 10 Sensor Bearers, and a Hell Pit Abomination, and a Work Grinder. So none of that bell nonsense coming in from the US. I don't know if that means we're behind the curve. It might be. Um, Jeremy bring for OBR. Metacross Poetry for Soul Mason, Death Riders. Ah, uh, so, all right, so here we have a 30 more tech guard list in all myriad with the Harvester and tw uh, not 26, 20 would be OP. Um, six and more discard. Um, yeah, I really like the diversity of the of the OBR lists, even though there's seven, so like there's seven OBR armies and seven Seraphon, and the Seraphon are just all, other than uh, the one coalesced, it's six nearly identical Starborn lists that are just having slans and croaks casting all their spells. And then OBR, um, I mean, obviously the number of War Scrolls in the OBR book are limited, but um, seems like there's a good amount of variety in the OBR list in terms of having a Crematorians list and a Mortis Praetorians list and some Null Myriads and some people are taking, you know, person's taking a big unit of Mortec Guard versus two by six of Mortis Guard in Ted's list or all the Morgasts. So it's nice that there's diversity there. Uh, I am curious what the other beast list is. All right, so here, this this is more the Doom Bowl. Maybe two by six. Six bulldorms. I don't know if these are six or nine. It must be sixes because they have two by two troopers. Um, so yeah, this is two by six bulldorms. Doom bull, shaman, and Bellacor. A um, little bit more standard. Oh, I feel like I thought there was. Wow, maybe I just had a. No, oh, never mind. I was like, I feel like I'm going crazy. I thought I, I'm like, did I dream this? Maybe I even did dream it. I, I thought there was, I think it was at the RTT over the weekend. I recently saw a beast list that was just like 23 more great chaos spawns and a shaman. Did this is miserable. <laughs> I hope I don't play this. I think it was at the RTT on Saturday. Um, yeah. So there's a little rundown of, of the US folks in my group, and then just a almost completely random smattering of everybody else. Um, yeah, I think that's it for, for videos for leading up to um, leading up to the tournament this weekend. I'll be traveling Wednesday night. Um, I might try and record like a short video recap at the end of like Thursday or Friday if I have a time. Um, but I'll probably be, I assume I'll be going out to dinner and stuff. And then there's the reveal show stream thing Friday night and like social event. Um, so it's probably unlikely I'll have time. We'll see. I may try and do just a quick, like five or 10 minute recap of the tournament. Um, but either way, if I don't do that, I will definitely make one when I get back and I will see you all in the next video. Thank you.